Good evening. We're back with some more Marvel Snap. Picking up from exactly where I left off in the previous video, starting at rank 8. And the first location is going to be cards that cost 1, 2, or 3 can't be played here. Alright, that's fine. So each of us plays Quicksilver on round one and location number two. When you play a card here, fill this location with copies of it. So gonna wanna play a very powerful card there. Probably, ideally Hulk or Abomination would be good. I don't think Medusa is gonna do it. And if I played Medusa there at this point, I would tell my opponent exactly how much power he needs to put there. in order to win the location, because I would not be able to play anything else there for the remainder of the game. So it appears we're going to be fighting at the rightmost location for the moment, and Star-Lord's ability does proc. He gets plus three power if the opponent plays a card at the same location. So cards played here have a 25% chance to be destroyed. Alright, no real way to play around that, it's just an RNG mechanic. And I'll go ahead and get Sentinel down, and I'll probably not play anything more than that. I won't play Hawkeye because that would fill the location, and I don't want to do that. And opponent plays Shocker, so we are tied, and neither of us gets our card destroyed. Jessica Jones seems like a good candidate to go on Crimson Cosmos, though you could make a case for Bar Sinister as well. That would be 32 power she would provide there. That's pretty strong. Only a few cards would beat that. Abomination, Hulk. So my fourth card at Danger Room is going to be Iron Man. And the opponent plays Lady Sif. And both, well, her card gets eliminated, and mine does too. So <laughs> we're going to end up tied there unless one of us plays something. And I decide I'm going to make a play for the middle location. So the opponent wins the left location by 7, and I win the middle by a lot. 40 something, so I win. Uh, Hulk was the ideal card to draw there to play in the middle location because it would fill the board with copies of the Hulk, fill the location with copies of the Hulk. So that will be a victory. And we'll take a look at the deck now that I'm using. And I'm thinking about swapping in Spectrum, not because I think Spectrum is better than Abomination, but because, in this particular deck anyway, but because I have a quest to use her in a deck. So I may do that now, or I may do that later. White Tiger, be good with Karma Taj or other on reveal effects, but 5 cost for 8 health for 8 power is not going to be better in this particular deck. It's better in certain circumstances because it plays a card on another location and so that can be useful for locations which block you from playing cards on them. But Abomination is slightly better in all other situations unless you have a way to take, a, take advantage of on reveal effect. So the leftmost lo location is going to be a draw card. And the center, add a ninja to each side with minus two power. Okay, so we only get three cards, three slots on the middle location. And I'm gonna drop Star-Lord there. And he whiffs. That's okay. So pretty even so far. Plus five energy this turn from Project Pegasus. So that changes things quite a lot. And I do have a way to use all of that energy. 
I don't think Iron Man is going to be the play. He doubles attack power, and I think I'll get more value out of him later. Jessica Jones, Mr. Fantastic, and Hawkeye is what I'm thinking. So I'm just debating where I want to put Jessica Jones. And I'm thinking a, uh, an even approach here. Going with not conceding any location yet. And not focusing on any location yet. Now I am likely to concede the left location. I'm not going to try to take advantage of Hawkeye's ability. And normally, I would not advise this. Playing my the fourth car here, fourth slot here, filling the fourth slot at Shadowlands is not a great play because we're still got two rounds left. And this tells my opponent exactly how much power he's going to need to take the location. However, in this situation, I felt Medusa would go completely to waste on the left location because I'm going to concede that. I didn't want to put Medusa on the right location and spoil Jessica Jones plus four buff. So I decide on the middle location means I'm not going to be able to add anything and probably I'm going to lose the middle location that's what I'm thinking at this point point. and if I do I'll probably lose the game so I don't like my position much in this situation at all I might have been actually better off not playing anything at all or playing Medusa on the left location and just accepting that I would lose it. And then I could play Hulk there later. That would have been the better play. So I would consider it a misplay what I did. I can go ahead and play Hulk here on the left location. Though, because in this situation, the opponent made... Well, the opponent has four cards on the left and right locations, and that tells me how much power I need to take each location. I know I don't need to add anything to the right location, barring any cards that move cards around. And I know that if I drop 12 on the left location, I'll be at 15 and I'll take that location. Likely I'll lose the middle one, but I should win. Yeah, no, uh, no snapping until rank 10. And so I do lose the middle location as I thought I would, but I take left and right and get the victory. Thanks to the Hulk. So that'll rank up to rank 10. And at rank 10 you get a free bonus rank and can also lose ranks now. And we have a featured location now. It's not a featured location I really feel the need to build around though. Cards here with the highest power have their power doubled so that doesn't really create an opportunity for a unique deck. So yeah, I'm not going to change the deck for the featured location. We'll just move on to the next game. Don't think there are any changes I could make that would be, be beneficial. I'm already playing the highest power cards in my collection. So Muir Island, that is an important one to get out cards early at. And I, I kind of played Quicksilver without really thinking about it. He should have gone on Muir Island. After each turn, cards get here get plus one power. So it's important to take advantage of that by getting a card there early. Onslaught's Citadel ongoing effects here are doubled, so here I'm going to get Star-Lord down on Weir Island, start taking advantage of that plus one each turn. And our Star-Lords miss each other. Avengers Compound on turn five, all cards must be played here, so I don't want to play anything else there until turn five. So 
I actually think the best play here is Sentinel and not Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane would only be 3 power. It would use all of my mana, but I could play Sentinel, get another Sentinel, and it would float one mana, but that's fine. Well, it wouldn't be floating because you don't keep it for the next round, but I would uh, have one mana go to waste, but I would get another copy of Sentinel, so I think that was the wrong play there, what I did. The location was fine, but I should have played Sentinel, not Wolfsbane, and saved Wolfsbane for later. Though my hand does curve out such that it would not have been used, I don't think. So I'm conceding the middle turn. I'm capable of snapping now, though I don't really know the game well enough to take advantage of it in every situation that I might. I'm conceding the middle location. And my plan is basically to play whatever I can. Iron Man wouldn't have had much value on Avengers Compound there, so I, I played Sentinel and Hawkeye instead. And now I will drop Hulk and just hope for the best. And unless the opponent can come up with 13 power on the right location, I should take that. And unless they can come up with 16 power on the left, I should take that and win the game. Great. It's worth two cubes. And we'll take a look at the deck again. Unlocked Odin. So, gonna take a look here at what Odin does. Activate the on reveal effects of all your other cards. So, I'm taking a look here at what my other on reveal cards are. What I'm trying to determine is whether Odin is going to be better on average than Hulk or not. So I would need him to get plus four power to equal Hulk's power. And in order to get that plus four power, he's going to need to be able to take advantage of on reveal effects that get him there. And I basically come to the conclusion that that will happen sometimes, but also sometimes not. And Therefore, he's going to be a little bit swingy in this particular deck with the cards that I have access to. I could build more around him with cards like White Tiger for the on reveal effect. If the featured location was something like Karmatage, which doubles your on reveal effects, I would probably consider building around them more. But in this case, I think Hulk is going to be more consistent than Odin. And so I'm sticking with Hulk. Though I'm definitely making a note of Odin for the future, and should more powerful on reveal effects come into my collection, then I will definitely swap Odin in. So, this location shuffles five rocks into the deck, a, an effect that I find very annoying. The center location, if you only have one card here, it get, has plus five power. Not likely to have a significant effect on the game. And all I have to play here are two rocks. Absolutely terrible when you have to have a blank turn. Not liking my chances in this one at all. My opponent has something to play here, and I don't. I'm going to lose nearly every time that happens. Sakar put a card from each player's hand here into play, and my, I get a rock, and my opponent gets Hulk, and my opponent snaps, and that'll be a concede from me. I had a blank turn, and then my opponent got a free Hulk. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, going to just concede. I agree, it was an excellent choice. So, back into the next round. Necrotia cards here have minus two power, so don't want to be playing any one cost cards there. You'll just end up with negative score. 
add a squirrel to each location. <laughs> I wonder if there's any cards that buff squirrels specifically. Medusa. Uh, that's either Medusa or Sentinel. Medusa has more power than Sentinel when played at the center uh, location and I'm trying to maximize the power that I can play for each round. So this is the introduction to the snap mechanic. The way the snack mechanic for new players is a way to gamble on your own matches. If you think the match is going well, you can risk gaining or losing two cubes instead of one, cubes being the way that you rank up. So if you think it's going well, you want to risk more. And you can also do it as a bluff because if your opponent sees a snap and and thinks to themselves, oh, my opponent is confident, therefore I should concede because I'm not that confident. Uh, you could steal a game that way, so it can be used as a bluff. It's a little bit of a, an element of poker introduced into the game. A little bit of poker mentality introduced into the game would be a better way to say that. So Cyclops for my opponent and in the negative zone where cards have minus three power I've already won that one without needing to play anything else because of the squirrels. The Hawkeye and the Misty Knights are all negative value for my opponent so I have a uh, an 8 point lead at center and an 8 point lead on left and my opponent's board is entirely full so I don't think I actually need to play anything here to win. Those squirrels ended up using quite a lot of spots. And that will end the game. And just gonna jump right back into another game. Hulk and Iron Man in the opening hand, that's pretty top heavy. Cards here with the highest power have their power doubled, okay. Nightcrawler versus Quicksilver. Center location, discard a card from each player's hand and I lose Hulk, that's sad times from Sokovia. We'll try for the Star Lord on turn on uh, middle location and it succeeds. So Domino, that's a curve evening card. Always draw that card on turn two. But the Iron Man plus three buff pretty strong when you can hit it. After turn three, shuffle your hand into your deck and draw three cards. Okay. Maybe I'll get Jessica Jones for turn four. Great. So I can probably drop her on throne room. That'll give me 16 power there. She opponent drops Jessica Jones too though. So I wouldn't say this game is looking that good at this moment. Go with Mr. Fantastic and Medusa. The Medusa gets only two power when played this way on the right location instead of the center, but if I put it on the center, I would be telegraphing how much power my opponent would need. Best case scenario, I tie there. And it would be very easy for my opponent to beat me there with anything. A one power card would do it. So. No Medusa in the fourth slot. Very important to keep that fourth slot open until the late game. And my opponent has played Namor on Sokovia, so that tells me that Mr. Fantastic gave me the edge on Throne Room if my opponent doesn't play anything there. If I play Iron Man on Sokovia, I will win that location and then my opponent would need to take both left and right from me 
in order to win the game. If they can do that, then they got me. And my opponent decides Odin to the left. They do take the left location, but I take center right and take the victory. So we're back into the deck to see if there's anything that I want to swap in. And I am swapping in Spectrum. I don't think Spectrum is better than Abomination. I just want to get the quest, the Play Spectrum Twice quest. So that's the only reason I did that. Negative zone for the left location. So definitely don't want to play anything of less than 4 power there. Los Diablos after turn 3 ruin a random location. Interesting. What does that mean? Does that mean it removes the effect of the location? So Colossus immune to effect, so he's going to be very powerful on negative zone, equivalent to a 6 cost card. After turn 3, transform all cards here into the Hulk. So, want to flood that location with low cost cards. Because they will all get transformed into the Hulk. So that will give me 36 power there at the Gamma Lab. Opponent plays Wolfbane, and unfortunately Los Diablos ruins the Hulk play I had set up, so I end up with 5 power there instead of 36. That would have given me, that would give, would have given me a, an ironclad grip on the ruins, but doesn't work out, and so now I've got to do the best I can and hope that my opponent can't hang on to the center location and take the ruins. I'm basically conceding the negative zone because, well, I have a shot there now with the Mr. Fantastic buff. I have a shot there if I can just get two more power there, so I need a five power card to overcome Colossus. I don't really have that in hand right now. I do wish Spectrum was Abomination at this moment. And playing Wolfsbane on the Ruins in this spot is very risky because it telegraphs how much power my opponent's going to need to take that location from me. Scarlet Witch, a very RNG card. After turn 5, move all other cards, move all cards to, to other random locations. Well, that's going to change the game pretty significantly. So we rolled the dice with that one. And my cards all go to the negative zone. Uh, okay. <laughs> but I am going to take the ruins. So where do I want to put Spectrum? Well, I can uh, drop Spectrum on the negative zone and give myself plus two power and I would not take that location. Or I can drop her in the middle and hope for the best. So I'm going to drop her in the middle and hope for the best. My opponent just needs eight power to take Strange Academy. There's a couple of cards that can do that. That wouldn't have done it. I think that would have won the game if it had gone at the middle, though. But it will be a victory. So, we're on rank 12 now. And Westview turned into a new location on turn four. So it's roll of the dice. Mm. 
Monster Metropolis. The card with the highest power here gets plus three power. All right, that doesn't really affect the game too much. So I'm going to drop Star-Lord to the blank location. Hope my opponent's thinking something similar with whatever he's got to play. And he doesn't play anything. Okay, well, blank turns for the opponent. Always happy to see. Ongoing effects there are doubled. Do I have any ongoing effects? I have Ant-Man. So he could be a plus six power card if I play him at Onslaught Citadel when there are three other cards there. Sentinels. Yeah, Sentinel could be very useful in smoothing out my resource curve. That's his main purpose. He's a utility card. And my opponent's got Mr. Fantastic. Westview transforms into Isle of Silence. Ongoing effects are disabled. Okay. So just checking to see which of my cards have ongoing effects. So likely... I think Ant-Man probably should have gone on Onslaught Citadel, but I was I think I was thinking that I was already winning there and I wanted Hawkeye's buff more than I wanted Ant-Man's buff. So we're tied at the Isle of Silence now. It's gonna be Iron Man on well, Jessica Jones. Probably is better in this spot than Iron Man. She's worth eight power and Iron Man's only worth a maximum of five at this moment. So I'll probably play Jessica Jones and just waste the one mana. Put her on the Isle of Silence and probably plan on playing Hulk on Onslaught Citadel next round. And hope that that's sufficient to win the game. Well, now I know that I need 13 on Monster Metropolis to win, and I also know that I can't do that, so... Hulk to Onslaught Citadel or Hulk to Isle of Silence. Well, I'm only winning Isle of Silence by two and I'm winning Onslaught Citadel by three, but I do get Jessica Jones's buff, which buffs it up to six. And so the right location is in more in the great in greater need of Hulk than the left. And so Hulk goes there and that gets the win. And that will do it for this session. We'll show the deck and so I'm going to be finishing at rank 12. I'm enjoying this game so far. In the next video for this game I'll do a card review for all of the cards that are available as a free to play player from rank 1 to 10. I'll probably do a card review every 10 ranks or so of all the cards that are available. Unless that seems like a really small amount, then maybe I'll do 20 ranks or something like that. I do think this is the best deck that I can make at this moment. Uh, except that I don't like Spectrum in the deck, I'd put Abomination back in. But um, Spectrum is in in order to do the quest. So in my next video, I will go over all of the cards that are available from rank 1 to 10 and why I chose the ones I did for my deck. There aren't a lot of decisions to be made when the collection is this small, but there are some. And I'll talk about that for anyone who's... And I'll talk a little bit about the what I would consider to be the ideal resource curve in terms of how many 1-cost cards, 2-cost cards three cost cards and then end game cards to play in each deck and what the consequences would be of changing that equation. So thank you for watching.